I'm Laura from Ian Taylor Trekking, um, and today I'm here to talk to you about our Everspace Camp Trip and packing for an Everspace Camp Trek. We've had a lot of women asking for a female perspective on what to pack, so I'm here to help you with that today. Uh, we offer a wide range of trips in the Himalayas, from trekking to climbing trips, so um, this is what I would bring with me on an Everspace Camp Trail. So, I'm going to start out with my, pack, my bag that um, our guide or porters are going to be carrying. Um, I like to use a 100 liter um, pack, a uh, duffel bag, excuse me, um, but a 90 liter would work as well. Uh, it's good to have something with a waterproof or water resistant on the outside just in case. Usually they're um, carried by yaks or porters, but um, if it does heavy, have a heavy rain, um, you don't want your, your gear getting wet on the inside. So something that is water resistant or waterproof is best. Okay, so for our sleeping bag, um, I have a 10 degree sleeping bag, um, a rated to 10 degrees Fahrenheit sleeping bag. Um, I personally run a little bit colder than others, so the 10 degree bag is enough for me. I also have a zero degree sleeping bag that sometimes I bring, um, but it depends on the time of year. Um, obviously this gear um, is going to be different depending on when you're going, so this is just kind of our, our general packing guideline here. Um, so I have my sleeping bag in here. All of our lodges um, that we would stay in, um, you're staying in a lodge the whole way, so you're never camping. Um, you're always in a bed, so that means you really do not need a, a mattress, um, a foam mattress. You uh, have blankets, you have pillows on your bed, so really a 10 degree sleeping bag is enough. If you're a little bit cold, you can throw over one of the blankets that's in the lodges for you. Um, a trick that we always use is our Nalgene bottle, um, a plastic bottle here. We would fill it with boiling water before we go to sleep, stick it inside your sleeping bag, and then you basically have a hot water bottle to keep you warm all night long. So we'll talk about that again later. Um, but I have my sleeping bag in there. And then I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Um, in terms of boots, so I, um, I've had a multiple range of boots. It's definitely important to get a boot that fits you well. Um, you want a high ankle support on there. You also want a pretty rigid boot. Um, it's going to basically give you the most comfort. You're going to feel, um, feel the rocks less, feel the trail less if you have a more rigid boot. Um, definitely you want something waterproof. I like a leather boot. Um, this is a Gore-Tex Scarpa leather boot um, and I've been pretty happy with these. So these are going to go in my pack or in my duffel bag. Uh, once you arrive each evening um, or afternoon into the huts, you definitely, the first thing you want to do is get off all of your hiking clothes, get off your hiking boots, clean up, um, and put on some fresh clothes. So I always have a pair of runners. These are just a pair of Solomon Trail Runners. Um, really any running shoe is going to do, just a lightweight shoe um, that you can put on when you get back each day. You will want to take those boots off at the end of a hiking day. So um, Socks. I usually bring one liner sock that I'm going to wear for the really cold um, when you try, if you're summoning Kalapatar, um, it can get quite cold. You leave, um, you know, depending, but you usually leave around 4 a.m. And so it can be freezing cold at that stage. So I always want to have one really thick, warm pair of socks to wear on that day, as well as a liner. I um, mean, also higher up, you know, depending on what weather you're getting, it could be colder. Um, I also will have about four or five pairs of good um, merino wool socks. I like smart wool um, in terms of my, my socks. Um, icebreakers as well make a great sock for trekking, um, but I will have four or five pairs of trekking socks as well. Um, okay, in terms of pants, my bottom layers here, I will have one pair of shorts lower down on the trail. Um, it usually is quite warm, so you can get away with wearing shorts the first couple of days. Um, again, I run a little bit colder than others, so I only would wear my shorts the first couple of days. So I definitely only bring one pair of really lightweight um, hiking shorts. Um, so I'll toss those in. And then I would have two pairs of trekking pants. Um, so the thing about trekking pants, you, um, you want, first of all, to be comfortable in them. Um, a pair of pants that are going to be lightweight, um, a lot of them are UV protectant, um, and they dry quickly. So it is not, um, it's not cotton, it's not a jean, nothing like that. Um, you want trekking pant material. Some people like to have the type that zip off into shorts. 
I end up just bringing one pair of shorts so I don't need those. But I would bring two pairs of, of pants with me and that way I can kind of switch off every couple of days, be changing them back and forth so that I feel like I'm wearing a fresh pair of pants on the trail. Um, I will have my fleece pants. Um, this is what I'm going to wear every day when I get back into the tea house. I'm going to want to wear, um, get into something comfortable and relatively clean. So um, I use just a pair of um, Sherpa brand, actually, uh, fleece pants. But you could really pick anything. You could have, you know, whatever you're comfortable in. Just a nice, lightweight tracksuit bottom would be fine as well. Um, so I'll toss those in the bag there too. And then I just bring one pair of base layers. Usually you're only really needing these higher up on the trail. Some people like to sleep in their base layer. Um, I generally sleep in either my base layers or my fleece pant. I'll switch off and on between them. But um, these are just a smart wool, uh, merino wool pair of, um, you know, mid-weight base layers. So these will go in there. And I can wear these underneath my trekking pants um, when we're summiting Kalapatar. Or if it is colder, higher up on the trail, um, I'll put these underneath my trekking pants just for the added warmth. So those go in. Um, so that is the bottoms. Um, in my day pack that I'm going to be carrying every day, I'm going to have my waterproof gear. So um, these are my waterproof bottoms. So, um, you know, anything Gore-Tex or Gore-Tex similar, these um, are actually a North Face High Vent Alpha. So this is the North Face's version of uh, Gore-Tex, essentially. And it is going to be a fully waterproof, block the wind, um, and they fit over my trekking pants so that I can, you know, always have them in my backpack and if it starts raining during the day, I can put them on over my pants. Um, so those are gonna go in. And then same idea here is my, um, this is actually a Gore-Tex um, rain jacket. It's a birdhouse jacket. There's so many different brands out there that you can buy. Um, but this is gonna be my waterproof jacket. It's got a hood. Um, and Gore-Tex are similar, is great to have. Um, you can also go with something that isn't Gore-Tex. Um, as long as it's a waterproof material, should be good there. All right, so on top. Um, for me, I generally like to stick with merino wool. Uh, main difference between using merino wool versus the synthetic is that merino is naturally antimicrobial, which means that it does not build up bacteria, so it doesn't get as stinky on the trip. Um, you know, you're going to be out there for, you know, could be up to 14 days, 12 to 14 days, you're going to be out, um, out there. And, you know, you obviously don't have a different outfit for every day, so you want to try and minimize um, your stink and how comfortable you are on the trip. So I like to go with merino wool. Um, it does just does not, because it's not building up the bacteria, it just never really gets as stinky as I feel that uh, synthetics would. Um, it's also a really soft material to the, to the touch, and I'm just a lot more comfortable in my um, merino than I am in synthetics. So I have a couple of different tops here. Um, I have a Patagonia merino wool, and I also have Icebreakers merino wool. I love the Icebreaker, um, their uh, base layers because they just I feel like it's it's a good um, it's a good company, and they are super soft to the touch and comfortable. So I really like their their products. Um, so I would bring two t-shirts with me, two short sleeve shirts. Um, and then I would have two longer sleeve um, merino wool tops uh, that would go over my t-shirts each day just for the little extra warmth. This one would have a hood on it. This is a 200 weight icebreaker, um, so I'd have one of these. And then I would have one heavier weight icebreaker, a 260, um, for higher up on the trail. So this is going to be a heavier weight uh, top that will be a bit warmer for like the Kalapatar day and higher up on base camp trail. So I will have two t-shirt layers and then three long sleeve um, base layers as well. Um, and then I always keep one more. This is actually a synthetic. Um, this one is what I keep for my sleeping top. So every night I'll actually put this on when I get into the hut um, so it's relatively clean. 
and sleep in it each night and then I can wear it on the last couple of days if I am you know running low on clean clothes so that's everything that I have for my tops um, for the next layering pieces so this is going to be my mid layers I like to have one heavier fleece with me um, this is a Patagonia R3 uh, it's super warm and I just really am comfortable in it so it's a nice item to put on each night when I'm in the hut um, and then it can be my mid layer that's thrown into my backpack every day um, just in case it gets a little bit cold out on the trail so I'll have one of those um, and then I'm actually a big fan of vests so uh, this is actually a Patagonia ultralight down vest it's an 800 fill goose down vest um, so it's so lightweight it packs into nothing um, and it just gives you that added warmth if you don't want to have a full jacket on your full down or a full fleece um, you just need a little extra warmth keeping your core is so in warm is so important so for me the vest really works so I always will have this actually in my backpack with me every day just in case um, then I would have my heavy down jacket um, which this one is a Patagonia 800 fill um, it's called the high loft jacket um, it's goose down it's 800 fill and the way to figure out which down jacket is the right one for you um, and the difference between the synthetic down and, and goose down. Um, goose down is naturally going to be a bit warmer than synthetics will be. Um, this one you can tell the warmth. So the 800 actually is about the quality of the down so that means it's a high quality down. Um, any of the big companies that you're using are going to be you know a 7-800 fill goose down um, is going to be a high quality down. But this one has thicker baffling, um, so these these um, the stitching is a little bit thicker on this. It's got more down in it, which makes it a warmer piece. Um, so as long as you're getting um, you know a high high quality brand like a Patagonia um, that you know is a great company as well that uses responsibly sourced down, um, you know it would become the main thing to think about is the loft of the jacket. So how warm is it? Is how thick the baffling is, how much down is it, is in the jacket. So this one is 800 fill, but it's a thicker, um, so it's kind of a step up from their normal down jacket, so it's going to be a warmer piece. Uh, this I use pretty much every evening in the huts. It gets quite cold in them most of the time. Um, and then on Kalapatar, you're wearing this the whole day, as well as um, sometimes in base camp, and you never know along the trail. I've been in Nepal, I've been on the base camp trail where I wore this jacket you know from day one pretty much the whole way up because we had such cold weather so having a good down jacket is a necessity on the trip so that is going to go in here so that's pretty much all of my clothing that I'm going to bring on the trip um, next I have my underwear sports bras I generally bring two bras a lot of people ask that one um, two is usually enough I can switch them on off and on each day um, and then I love like the icebreaker uh, merino wool underwear so I have purchased about seven or eight pairs of those and bring those with me on the trip so seven or eight is generally enough um, icebreaker or the, the merino wool underwear is great too because you can rinse it out and you know in some water and it'll dry overnight if you want to leave it out or you can hook it onto your backpack as well um, so I have about eight pairs of those um, all right, gloves. I have cold hands. Um, it's something that I have learned over the years that I need to be really specific with how I take care of my hands because they do get quite cold. So I always have a uh, pair of liner gloves. These are just a pair of Black Diamond Polar Tech gloves that I have um, that I can wear these on their own lower down when it's not too cold um, or just if I'm walking during the day, this is generally enough. Um, but then I actually have my a ski glove. Um, these are mittens. I prefer mittens for a trip like a base camp trail because I do find them to be warmer. If I was going on to climb a peak, um, I obviously wouldn't want to have mittens because you need to be able to use your fingers. So you'd want to have gloves. But for me, um, mittens seem to work quite well. Um, but I like to have a range of gloves. So I might even have a mid-layer glove that I um, would bring as well. But having one thick outer glove that is waterproof um, as well as liner gloves is essential. 
And then I think this is one of the most important pieces of, of gear is my buff. So I bring two personally. Um, they're so lightweight, they don't weigh much, so it works well. Um, it doesn't add any weight. But I bring one buff um, that is not fleece lined and one that is fleece lined. Uh, the fleece lined one is great for higher up because you can put the fleece around your neck and then this can go around your head um, and cover you know, cover your mouth up so that really everything is cold and then you have your, your woolly hat on as well. So I have one fleece one and then for lower down on the trail I have one that doesn't have the fleece lining so that even though it's hot out you still with the dusty trails it's great to be able to cover your nose and mouth with the um, non fleece lined one. Uh, when it's warmer. So I have two of those and then I would bring, usually I bring two woolly hats just to be safe. Um, you know, you definitely don't want to get cold so I bring two just in case something is going to happen. Um, and then my sun hat. So on the trail there's so many things that you're having to worry about along the way. You know, the, the fitness levels that you have, um, you have the altitude that you're dealing with, so you really don't want to cause any extra stress on you. So covering yourself fully from the sun is so essential. Um, so even though they're goofy, we always recommend wearing a sun hat. Um, you can also do a baseball cap if you like. Um, but it's best to get the neck and the ears covered. So I would either have both or just the sun, the full um, brimmed sun hat with me. Um, so there's all that. Um, last bit here is my pack. Um, I've had this pack for quite some time. This is, um, this is actually a 50 liter pack. It's an Osprey bag. Um, I would say a 35, 45 liter pack is going to be good enough. The main thing that you want to think about is the waist strap. So you want to be carrying all the weight on your waist. So making sure that it has a good waist strap and good support, um, is essential. So, um, the other little bits and pieces that I have here that I want to show you that I'll be bringing. Um, first of all is my water systems. So, I will always carry a Nalgene with me. Um, this is obviously, when I was saying before, I would put boiling water in this, put it in my sleeping bag. So, it's then been treated. So, when I wake up, I can drink that water because it was boiled already. Um, so, I have one of these. And then I also would have a two or three like uh, two or three liter liter um, bladder or camelback, uh, so that while you're on the trail, this is in your backpack and you can just be sipping on it all day long. You definitely drink more water when you have a cam when you have the bladder system, um, as opposed to always having to stop, open bottles and drink it. So we always say have both of them. So I would have both of these, um, and then you're going to need your water purification tablets. We do not recommend people buying bottled water on the trail. Um, first of all, it gets expensive. Um, it can get up to $3 a bottle on the trail. And we are always recommending people to drink four to five liters of water a day. Um, it helps with the altitude. Um, you dehydrate so much quicker at altitude. So if you can keep yourself hydrated, you're going to see, you're going to have so many more benefits than if you're dehydrated, you get headaches and, you know, it, it's just a lot tougher. So. We always recommend um, to just buy water purification tablets. You can buy them in Kathmandu, they're super inexpensive. You can buy them before you leave. Um, but having that with you is super important. Um, at, up in the, um, up in the, along the trail, you can buy water the whole way. But like I said, we don't recommend people buying it. Um, Nepal also does not have any recycling set up up in the mountains. Um, as you can imagine, there is a lot of rubbish and trash everywhere and plastic bottles are a huge problem up there. So we always say to try and treat water um, instead of buying plastic bottles. So as well as my water purification tablets, I like to bring um, some like diorolite or um, electrolytes, added electrolytes to add to my water every once in a while. And you're going to be burning quite a bit of fuel. You need to get that added energy in. You're going to be sweating a lot. Um, so having some of that is a great idea. I also bring a lot of things like these. I'll bring, you know, maybe five or six packets of these. These are just like um, energy chews. They're, they have caffeine and calories in them. So when you're on the trail, um, having things like this, having a few power bars, um, any sort of 
protein bar that you like to have is always good to have a few of those with you as well. Um, I'll also have a medical kit with me. Um, you know, our trips, our head guides will always be carrying um, full medical kits with them. However, we do suggest or recommend that every person carries their own personal supply um, of medical supplies. Uh, we definitely have a full list that we give to you when you sign up for one of our trips of what we think you need to have. Um, but in here, I would have plasters, band-aids, um, you know, alcohol, sterile wipes. I'd have some blister pads. I would have headache tablets, disparin, aspirin, Tylenol. Um, and I would have a dose of antibiotics just to be safe. Um, something for uh, chest infections, um, cough drops, things like that. So a wide range of supplies that I would have in terms of medications with me. Um, I would have all of that. Um, for me, I am a contact lens wearer, so I always um, have spare solution. I also bring extra contacts with me um, just to be safe. You would hate to be in a situation where something happens and you're left without um, being able to see. So I also bring a pair of glasses with me as my backup um, just in case something happens with my contacts or you know I'm, I'm not able to wear them. So I always have all of that. Um, in terms of my toiletries, I have a little bar of soap with me always. Um, in the huts, it's great to be able to really clean your hands, um, you know, help you feel a little bit cleaner. Sunscreen, a 30, 50 plus sunscreen. Um, you know, the UV rays up there are so strong. You also get the glare of the sun hitting the, the mountains and the snow, um, and you do not want to be caught with a sunburn. So a 30 to 50 sunscreen is extremely necessary. Um, and then all my other just general um, bits and pieces for toiletries, toothbrush, deodorant. Um, I bring a little bit of soap, maybe a small tiny shampoo and conditioner in case I do decide to shower in one of the huts along the way um, is all going to be in here. Also bringing uh, feminine products. A lot of people do end up getting their period even if they're not planning on it while they're on the trip. Um, just with the altitude it can kind of mess with your system a little bit. So I always carry spare you know, tampons and, and things like that with me just to be safe because you don't want to get caught out up there um, without having everything that you need. So I'll have all of that. Um, also have some kind of vitamin C, a lot of vitamin C. Every day I'll be taking um, either an emergency packet or a Baraka, um, keeping, trying to just keep your immune system working well. Obviously you're in a very different environment. Um, it's easy to get sick out there and you definitely don't want to. So. I take a multivit every day when I'm out there, as well as taking um, vitamin C packets and, and lots of different things like that while we're out there. Plus it helps with the water because you're drinking so much water all the time. To have something that kind of flavors it every once in a while is, is wonderful. Um, hand sanitizer, I will make sure that I have a couple of bottles of hand sanitizer with me at all times. Um, one will always be in my backpack so that you know, if I have to go to the bathroom on the trail, I immediately have it to clean up. You want to really keep yourself clean. Um, that is one of the biggest tips we can give you is making sure you're managing your hygiene out there. Washing your hands as much as you possibly can. Um, every day you should be, you know, hand sanitizing every time after you go to the bathroom, after you're touching things. Um, you know, keep yourself clean to stay, to stay healthy out there. Um, I'll also have a lot of baby wipes. So generally, um, if I do take a shower on the trail, it's usually in Namche. You can take them along the way. Um, personally, I've always found that I just use the baby wipes, keep myself clean that way. Um, I don't like to have wet hair up there just because it's, you know, it is colder and it's, it's hard to dry. I have kind of a lot of hair, so it takes forever to dry. I just usually prefer um, to wait until the way down to, to get clean again. Um, so I'll have a lot of baby wipes with me. Um, I also always keep a spare pair of laces in my bag um, in case my boots, um, in case my laces on my boots broke. Um, I will have my head torch and with that I'll have at least two sets of spare batteries just to be safe. Um, then I will also have a pair of sunglasses, category four. Um, these are Jublo Nomads and I really like these. They have the wrap around so that the sun isn't getting in on the side either. Um, category three is okay. Um, category four is great if you can, um, just to protect your eyes. And then I also will have a towel just to use up on the, on the mountains. Like I said, when you do shower, it's great to have a fresh towel. 
um, and then to wash your hands and wash your face. So this is everything I'm going to bring with me on the base camp trek. My bag, uh, my pack, day pack usually is going to be around five to five to six kilos, so 10 to 12 pounds. Um, and then my duffel bag here that's going to go with the porters is going to be about 10 to 15 kilos. So 20 to 25, 30 pounds maybe. Um, and that should be more than enough to, to bring with you on your base camp trail. So if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch anytime. My email is laura at iantaylortrekking.com or you can check us out at the website www.iantaylortrekking.com.